Hey everyone, it's Miss Lopez. Welcome to the first set of notes for Unit 2, where the first topic we talk about are cells, the working units of life. Here are some of the key concepts we're going to cover in this first part of your notes. First, we're going to talk about how eukaryotes acquired features from both archaea and bacteria. This is going to be a little bit into Chapter 20, where we talk about the endosymbiotic theory. Then we move on to chapter four, where we talk about cells and how they provide chemical or compartments for biochemical reactions. And then we look at 4.2, where we compare prokaryotic cells, which do not have a nucleus, to eukaryotic cells. The first thing we need to talk about is the cell theory, which is the first unifying theory of biology. There are three main principles to this theory. One, cells are the fundamental units of life. Two, all organisms are composed of cells. And three, all cells come from pre-existing cells. There are some important implications of the cell theory. First, studying cell biology is basically the same as studying life. And life is continuous, meaning all the way back to the evolution of the first living cells. Eukaryotes are monophyletic meaning that they would have their own branch on the tree of life, such as shown here. You can see on this tree where the last universal common ancestor would be found. And then for eukaryotes, the branch we are talking about is over in this area right here. Eukaryotes are cells that include animal, fungi, plants, protista, and other organisms. Eukaryotes are thought to be more closely related to archaea than bacteria. So you can see here coming from Luca that this node right here leads up to archaea. However, eukaryotes are over in this direction as opposed to bacteria which are over in this area right here. However, we're going to talk about how the mitochondria and chloroplast, which are components of the eukaryotic cells, are clearly derived from this branch instead. The events that occurred in order to have a, the arisal of that eukaryotic cell include the origin of that flexible cell surface, the origin of the cytoskeleton, the appearance of that nuclear envelope, digestive vacuoles where specific chemical reactions can take place, and the acquisition of certain organelles by endosymbiosis. Let's talk about the importance of some of these features. First of all, the flexible cell surface, the loss of that cell wall, which, occurred in, which occurs in some modern prokaryotes, opened up some possibilities. So the cell wall is like a, 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 like a wall, literal wall around the cell, that would prevent things from passing in and out of the cell. When that cell wall is lost, it allows for infolding of that plasma membrane and creased, created larger surface areas. Another important feature about the infolding of the plasma membrane is that chemical reactions could take place there in, in prokaryotes that later would arise or take place in organelles in eukaryotic cells. Another important key factor about that flexible surface is that now endocytosis is possible. Um, this is the pinching off of bits in the environment and bringing them into the cell. As I mentioned, the infolding of the plasma membrane allowed for specific reactions to take place. We call those that process compartmentalization. And by increasing compartmentalization, you can increase the complexity of the cell. So you get the development of a more complex cytoskeleton. You get the formation of ribosome-studded internal membranes, some surrounding the DNA. You get the enclosure of the DNA in the nucleus. And one of the key things to understand about these formations of these uh, internal membranes and the enclosure of that internal membrane, membrane is that it's all coming from the plasma membrane. And together, this, these different organelles that, are, um, that may have ribosomes in it 
and the DNA, the, the nucleus um, surrounding the DNA and creating that membrane bound structure um, creates what is called your endomembrane system. In this process, we can also have the formation of the flagella from microtubules of the cytoskeleton and the evolution of digestive vacuoles. One of the key moments in evolution of the eukaryotic cell is the formation of that nuclear envelope. It developed early in eukaryote evolution and may have arisen from DNA attached to the membrane of an infolded vesicle. Prokaryote DNA is attached to the inner plasma membrane. We're going to, we're going to take a moment to see the differences between the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell besides that nuclear envelope. The evolution of eukaryotes from prokaryotes was made possible thanks to a specific process known as phagocytosis. This is the ability to engulf and digest other cells. Endosymbiosis is the theory that a proto proteobacterium was incorporated and eventually evolved into the mitochondrion. The mitochondrion original function might have been to detoxify the oxygen that was being produced by cyanobacteria, reducing it to water. Later, this became coupled with the formation of ATP. I'm going to use this T-chart to compare my prokaryotic cells to my eukaryotic cells based on certain conditions and characteristics. First is the presence of a, nu a membrane-bound nucleus. Prokaryotes do not have a membrane-bound nucleus, while eukaryotes do. Next, we're going to compare the DNA between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Prokaryotes have a single circular shaped chromosome, whereas eukaryotes will have many linear chromosomes. Next, we're going to compare the size of prokaryotes to eukaryotes. Prokaryotic cells are very small, whereas eukaryotic cells are large. Next, we're going to compare the cell walls for the prokaryote and the eukaryote. If a cell wall is present in a prokaryote, it's going to be made of a molecule called peptidoglycan. If a cell wall is present in eukaryotes, such as the case for plants, it is, it is called cellulose. If the eukaryote is a fungi, then the cell wall will be made of chitin, another carbohydrate. Now let's talk about what these two types of cells have in common. First is their genetic material. Both cells contain DNA as the genetic material. Second, they are both going to have organelles called ribosomes. Now these are not membrane bound organelles. Instead, ribosomes are made of rRNA and proteins. Next, prokaryotes and eukaryotes are both surrounded by a plasma membrane made of a phospholipid bilayer. Last, let's talk about the different types of organisms are representative of these two types of cells. Prokaryotes are going to be exclusively bacteria, whereas eukaryotic cells will include plants, animals, fungi, and protista. Here is a model of a bacterial cell. One of the things to understand about bacteria or prokaryotes, and one of their major defining features, is the lack of a nucleus. So the chromosomes themselves are floating in the cytoplasm, as you see here. There's no membrane round structure that prevents the DNA from intermingling with other DNA it, called plasmids or any other part of the prokaryotic cell. The area in which the chromosome, the single chromosome that bacteria or prokaryotes have is called a nucleoid. But it's really important to understand that there's no membrane bound structure here. It's just the area in which it's found. 
The chloroplast is also believed to have developed from, through a series of processes um, in, of Here is a diagram depicting the process of endosymbiosis that led to the formation of the chloroplast. So here you have the primitive eukaryotic cell, and this primitive eukaryotic cell has its own membrane surrounding it. Here is the cyanobacterium, and the cyanobacteria also has its own membrane and a cell wall made of that peptidoglycan. That the engulfing process or phagocytosis of the cyanobacterium eventually led to the formation of a chloroplast.